Hello everyone, this is Apex, and you're now watching the number one Zaiwu hater in the world. So FaZe Clan was the best team of the last two years of Counter-Strike. You can even count if you had this little bit of CS2 because they got a few championships. Obviously, it was actually only once they'd um, let twists go that they started... Um, that they'd begun losing events, that luckily they didn't leave us wondering what if when they had him in the lineup. So the five-man lineup I'm referring to here in terms of having an era is obviously the lineup that began in 2022. It is with Carrigan's in-game leader, Rain, sort of an entry-type player. Rops joined as the star lurker. Brokey is sort of the opera, but obviously more of an aggressive player. And then Twists is sort of in the middle somewhere. And people think of him as more of an entry historically, but I'd say this team, he was sort of left to fill sometimes. And mainly, people know actually sometimes coming in as a closer or in the middle of the round was kind of his skill set and then obviously Robin was the coach from us but now Neo was the coach of FaZe Clan people don't know so this team won a major it won PGL Antwerp the first major they played together they won the Intel Grand Slam because they won Cadavice in 2022 they won ESL Pro League Season 15 they won um, I am Cologne obviously the major was PGL so that didn't count and then in 2023 they secured the Grand Slam by winning ESL Pro League Season 17 and if you add in the major to the fourth the one for the Intel Grand Slam there. That is a total of five lands won. Three of those were the most important of 2022, which were, of course, the major. Pidgey Lantwerp, that was even a bigger major than Rio, I'll just say. It was more of an important one. And then, crucially, kind of eight in Cologne. And they're actually even somewhat flanking that major, so it even looks better, right? I've obviously talked in the past about what the difference between a prestige event is and just another event like a blast or whatever. But the problem is, the consensus is that they failed to have an era. Now, there's a few reasons why. First of all, because after they won Antwerp, so at that point in time, they'd had, you remember, it's just a group stage for a blast at the beginning. Either. You don't get the actual finals. Therefore, you can't win that tournament. So I don't count it as a land until it gets to the finals. I think that should be counted as one land. So you had basically kind of eight here with the stand-in, but they still did eventually get the proper lineup in. You win that tournament. You get ESL Pro League, you win that tournament. Now, admittedly, by the way, you could say on the Kelevitsa one, having GKS Angle and a stand-in, you could say that potentially if we're talking about five-man lineup makes the era a bit weaker, but they did win the tournament. So they won Kelevitsa, they won PGL, they won in between the two, the Pro Leagues, they'd won three events in a row. If they'd have then won IEM Dallas right after us, that would have been four lands in a row. I think for different people, that might even already have started to establish the era. Maybe people would have said, like, you want to event away, or maybe they would have even said, you've already done the era for this point of the year. I don't know. I think time constraints would have been an issue, right? So because right after Antwerp, they fell twice. They had... I am Dallas where they came 56, so they made the playoffs, but didn't go any further. And then they had Blast where they also made the playoffs. It was the one that was won by Navi, but they also didn't go any further. So I actually think they sort of maybe to normal tracking of an era reinvigorated that when they won Cologne, which obviously in this particular case, you have to remember, was the last tournament before the player break this time around. And... When they won that event, I think if they'd have then followed up after that and won like Pro League, people also might have said, maybe this is an era, maybe that. So I think actually the two times they failed to consolidate was after the major and after Cologne, two of the biggest events of the year, especially because when the next major came along, not long after Cologne and and playoffs, etc., it was only a few months later, I am Rio, they didn't even make the playoffs. And I think not even making the playoffs spoiled that whole narrative I often make of at least you have to be a defining factor in the run of the tournament. Like even if you lose, it's about you lose more than someone else winning. But in this case, they didn't even make the playoffs. So obviously that wasn't really that relevant. Now, crucially, I'm not just pontificating when I discuss like, eras and who has won and what should we consider an era? Because the good news is I've covered that topic many, many times on this channel. I was actually the person who first started this lens of eras in Counter-Strike. And I obviously did a video where when Team Liquid looked like they'd potentially blown their chance for an era, I examined, because I'd been saying during it, like when they won the Grand Slam in records, like, hey, this is the Team Liquid era. We're, we're in it. Essentially, it's that thing of like, you know, that you better start believing in, you know, supernatural horror stories because you're in one. It was one of those, right? The problem I will say Day, though, which we'll get to is it's very hard to call eras while they're happening because the problem is while they're happening by definition the team is winning events they're dominant they're the best team so what happens is you always extend the trajectory and you think they're going to win more events or that they won't stop winning or it's hard to imagine them stopping winning so you already think well, if they won five or three or two in a row or a major in a couple of lands well they're going to win at least one more or two more and then maybe they take this one here so suddenly that's eight that's nine that's ten maybe they can get to 12 or 13 and suddenly you get way ahead of yourselves it's like what people do with Zebu when he becomes number 
number one in a year. They go, well, if he's already done it for five, imagine when he's done nine or ten. Then he'll be totally untenable. No one will be able to stand against it. Well, then, by that logic, why didn't Simple? Last year, 2022, the end of 2022, Simple was number one player of the year. Why weren't you all going? Well, imagine when he gets five more of these. You didn't do that. What you did is you, like your players, you imagined because he's right in the middle of it. Well, why would it stop? So it'll continue. People could have said the same thing about people like Simple or Cold Zero when they were top or Get Right. The point is, it's very, very hard to be the best player for a year or to be the dominant team in a win a lot of tournaments. So the idea that they're just, oh, well, they'll just go on and do it. No, no, doing it is the main feat. It's the accomplishment. It's very, very hard. It's very hard to be number one for a year in Counter Strike. why when you do it, I give you bad props. But you certainly can't just take for granted someone's going to do it. Spoiler, people would have said the same thing after Zewu had repeated on HLTV in 2020. Go look how he did in the spring and the early part of 2021. They don't like to tell you about that period of Zewu's grade, the, the old Zewu stands. Now, the point here, obviously, is when I made that video about Liquid, one of the things I discussed was Liquid doesn't get to have an era overall because they had basically, they were really close in a bunch of areas. I put up a bunch of like stats for all these different era-defining teams and greatest teams ever in different periods and how many series they won and titles and top fours. There was a bunch of times they were close. There was a couple like series run in a row where they were actually like way ahead of some of the teams with eras. But their problem was most of the teams with era had won a major. They hadn't. They hadn't been able to cement their era. There was only three that I totally cemented, which was Fnatic, NIP, and Astralis. I actually discussed in that video why I think we should take SK's era away from them, actually. And so the problem is those ones, they really do, across the gamut, hit such highs and usually above the other teams that don't have the eras. That's kind of clear cut that Fnatic, NIP, and Astralis have an era. In NIP's case, they actually don't have the major in theirs. That was later on. But they were just so dominant in the early days. And they were winning so many tournaments. They used to lose like one tournament out of every like 10 or something ridiculous guys. So yeah, as a result, they get to have an era. So the problem is... Then you have to uh, consider, you can compare Team Liquid 2019 to Fnatic 2015 to NIP 2013 to SK 2016 or 2017. You can do that because the circuit was comparable enough. It actually is somewhat fair to compare one-to-one -one things like how many majors did he win, how many chances. Even though I will say, if you are, by the way, a Team Liquid, for example, you actually have a much harder time getting a major and within your era than an NIP and a Fnatic, but not an Astral because Astralis and Team Liquid are doing it in the era of two majors a year. By the way, sometimes in, in this modern day, we've had one major in a year as we're going to have had last year, obviously, or 2021. So if you go back to the early days, like NIP and Fnatic, they were getting three majors a year. I mean, in the case of NIP at the beginning, they had no majors. So you see how interesting it is. It's not as simple as just one for one all across the board. But in general, at least in those years, you could. I actually think the new angle we have to apply now is to look at how different the time constraints and how busy the circuit is now. So that's the biggest problem for me. What I'm going to suggest is the time period I think FaZe's era was from. And unsurprisingly, I'm going to bookend it with championships. And when we get those championships, I think that will be the rough defining period that I'm calling the era. And so I'm not going to actually just count everything this five-man lineup did. So, for example, they won tournaments in CS2. I'm not counting CS2. They continued on to be a relevant team after their potential era, but they weren't in the finals. They weren't always in the semis. So I'm counting that it's going to end then. So I'm going to go with, they make the lineup, obviously, at the beginning of 2022, don't they? So they go to Blast, but as I say, it's just a group stage. Who cares about that? But they do well anyway. Then they go to Katowice and they win, admittedly, with the stand-in situation. So prestige event right there. They go to ESL Pro League Season 15. Admittedly, by the way, if you want to contrast it against the great teams of all time, ESL Pro League events don't have a massive crowd and a massive stage set. So they're not quite as hype. They're certainly not prestige events for me, but they have the best teams in the world then, a lot of matches. So they win Pro League, they go to the Major, they beat um, Na'Vi in the final, and they win the Major, admittedly, yeah, some close games, but they did win the Major, so you've won three events in a row, including the Major, then they go to Dallas right afterwards, it's literally like within the week afterwards, the problem they had was they lost to Cloud9 and Ents, which are the two teams that were in the final, and then and Cloud9 won the event, so you could still say, remember my angle of sort of like, what about def them being the defining team, like when Cloud9 wins that event, and Ents comes second place, actually them beating FaZe is more significant until Cloud9 wins the event, than winning the event, and even winning the event. So yeah, you won the event, but it's also a big deal that you stopped FaZe winning the event. That, by the way, that actually in itself would have been a third event on the Grand Slam because obviously Cologne ended up being the third notch, but this could have been a third notch already. So at that point in time, did Cloud9 become dominant afterwards? No. Did Ents win tournaments afterwards? Not this year. So actually at this point in time, FaZe is still the defining factor. They're still number one in the world. Then you go to Blast Spring Finals. So this is the follow-up tournament from what the groups qualified you to. 
So now we're going to this land, and they make the playoffs. And who do they lose to in the playoffs? Na'Vi. 2-0. Na'Vi wins the event. So again, at this point in time, my angle as well, that it's not just about if you win the event, but it's about if you losing the event is a big narrative because you're still clearly the team, the number one team, and the one to beat out. So that still counts here. So then you go, Rubek Cop was online. No one cares about that. Then you go to Cologne. Cologne's the next event. We've only had two events. You made the playoffs above, and you've been eliminated both times by the eventual champion. So you go to IEM Cologne, but they may, I picked them to win this event. You win the event. You're right back. You're still number one. That, that validates it. You are number one. You have won four tournaments this year already. I think you could actually argue, by the way, just that period there is an era. You could just argue these seven months or so is the FaZe Clan era. Because as much as, remember, Liquids was more like, what, four or five months. You might go, yeah, but there's no major. Well, there is a major here. Oh, and by the way, we've also won all three of the... The, of the top four events this year, if you're going to go with Prestige, you'd have to say it's going to be the two majors and then Kanavitsa and Cologne. Well, you've won three of those events. The only one you didn't win is I Am Real, which comes later. In this time period, you won all the... You can argue this alone is a major. Because remember as well, as I'm going to get to later, FaZe is attending all the events they can. They're in the blast circuit. They're a Louvre team. They're qualifying for all the lands and they're a top-ranked team, so they get all the invites anyway. So at this point in time, you're attending every event and what's happened is two of the lands you went to, you didn't win and you lost to the actual champion in the playoffs. Like, you're easily the number one team here. You're easily the most dominant squad. No one else even comes close. Like, why would Na'Vi win in one event and then come in second in some playoffs be comparable? It isn't. Why would Cloud9 win in Dallas but then not doing much elsewhere and not doing fuck all at the major? Why would that be relevant? Remember, they got eliminated by fucking Fallen and Imperial at that major. No one's fucking with them. So you can already, by the way, first of all, say that if you look at this time span, we're talking about from February through to Cologne. So minimum, we're talking like half a year. Let's just let's just make it half a year. Instead of going, is it seven months? Is it five? Let's just say it's, it's roughly half a year. It's half the circuit. So if half the circuit, you're easily the dominant team winning most of the big events. That alone's good enough right there. Because in the past, you'd play way more lands, but that also, by the way, gives you a chance to win more titles, which is why when you look at total titles, those teams look crazier. Total top fours, those teams look crazier. You're playing less events at this point in time. That's part of the problem. But anyway, let's continue on. Obviously, after that, they kept playing. Then they had the group stage again. This time, it was a bit more sus. Pro League, if you remember, they lost to Cloud9. And in the end, this was the one that was won by the Sphinx-infused Vitality. You then went, they qualified for the major, but famously at the major, they got bounced by Bad News Eagles and finished in last place of the main event of the top 16. So they blew it there, which already somewhat spoils your major talk in the traditional sense. And that's how people thought of it. You bounce right back and you are literally on championship point to win Blast 4 finals. But Heroic wins that one in very epic fashion on the third map. Then you go to the world finals. You are eliminated in the semis by G2, who at the time becomes, for this event and the next one, a dominant team and goes on a win streak. The next year, you do well in the spring groups. But that's obviously just the build up to the spring finals later. You go to Kanavitsa and actually you don't make the playoffs. It's crucial to note, 7th to 8th is not a playoff finish at Kanavitsa. It's just outside of it. They lost to Liquid, who was one of the better teams of the era. But it doesn't matter. It's not the team that wins the event. So you can't do that angle. By the way, on this angle back here, let's go back again. Aside from Rio and EPL, those two events, those are the only two events, by the way, in 2022, that when FaZe does lose, it's to anyone other than the actual champion in terms of being eliminated. So if you go back, just as I said, at Dallas and Spring Finals, the champion eliminates them from the tournament. At Fall Finals, they lose in the finals, so Heroic by definition eliminates them. Then G2 wins from the semis of the World Finals. So you could also say they maybe could have even come second at the World Final, and they're losing to just the champion. So they are the defining team of 2022. You could also say for 2022, they were the best team. You'd have a bit more of a hard time in terms of the win events towards the end of the year. So you keep going. They then go and obviously win the Grand Slam finally at ESL Pro League Season 17. Not a massive audience. We get it, etc. But they win that. They get the Grand Slam. They get the money. I'd say that's where you should count it from. In my opinion, that's where it ends. The phase era goes from... You can start in the group stage here, but the first event won is kind of eats it. So we're talking February of 2022. And it goes to... Latter part of March 2023. So we're talking about what? 12, 13 months? 12, 13 months. In that time span, you have won um, five tournaments. One was a major. Two were prestige events. I mean, three were technically. Two were additional prestige events. So three prestige events and a Grand Slam, all as part of that. I would say that alone can be the... That, that can be an era. Why isn't it? You are the team of that era. You are the definitive team of that era. Even when other teams come along, they're not doing enough. They're never overtaking you and they're a flash in the pan to some degree. So crucially for me, if you look at it, 
you have to remember how the circuits changed. And this is what I'm going to show you now. So when we went online, we've never gone back to the circuit we had beforehand. In tier one, there used to be loads of lands. Then there was loads of medium lands that all the top teams went to. There were even the odd smaller ones the top teams went to for money or because it's regional. And then you had the DreamHack Opens. You had like CS Summit. You had these smaller events that actually were out there even in the circuit. And so you would have so many lands that it meant that to be dominant, you either could win loads but in a shorter period of time or you could be dominant over a long period of time because there's so many events, you actually get more chances. So you, if you go to five events and you win three, but lose two, it doesn't look as bad as if there's five events over a six month span and you lose two. Because it looks like, wow, for two months you're not winning events. It's different in the old circuit. So when we came back, remember the online period was roughly from sometime in spring 2020 after kind of eight say, to autumn 2021. It ended with Cologne in theory, although we didn't have the, the obviously crowds back then. It was all online competition. Then the circuit came back, but not to the same degree. So what I'll do is I'll contrast this with events won by the kinds of teams that have an era like Fnatic like Astralis by the way Astralis is great because as I said it's even in the two majors a year era obviously they won um, three of their titles in this time period right then you got although technically four actually because I guess the first year uh, the second year to have two majors a year was when they won the Atlanta one in 2017 2016 was the first one with the two majors a year because we went to the million dollar majors instead of when they used to be like 250k and it was 100k for first place so crucially, in the era of Fnatic and Astralis, you have more events, and as a result, it's not actually the end of the world to lose an event. When there are fewer events, there's less chances to win and prove dominance and maintain longevity, and also, it's going to become even more about the big events, but then if you fail, you won the big events, so... Shouldn't you get credited for that? The fewer chances you have, the more the wins matter because they're going to totally define the story. So when I looked it up in 2022, we'll do a quick count here. So what we'll do is count groups and finals as one for Blast. So there's one, two with kind of eight here, three with Pro League, four with Antwerp, five with Dallas, six with Cologne, seven with Fall, eight with Pro League, nine with the Major, that's counted already. So 10 with World Finals. So there are 10 LAN events, and they attended every event they could of the big events. 10 LAN events over all of 2022. And FaZe, by the way, won four of them. They obviously won the fifth one Pro League the next year. So they, there was 10 events over this one year to compete in. Now, let's go. And if we want to count the period they were winning events, then we count this. We obviously can't count Spring because there's not Blast Finals yet. We count kind of eight it and they're probably... So over the time that they're winning all five of the events and the era counts for me, there's only 12 events and they win five of them. Like, you do know 5 of 12 is like 41.66%. They won over 40% of all the Tier 1 lands held over this time span just over a year. That's pretty impressive, guys. To win 41% of all the tournaments held. And by the way, the only one out of the biggest events they did at win was one of the majors. They won a major and they won two prestige events and a Grand Slam in this time period. Instead, let's go compare to like Fnatic. So look, you remember, Fnatic, I always think the, tr the tricky thing with Fnatic is this. I personally thought they became dominant. They made the lineup here. The first event was Gfinity G3 with all of Meister and Crims. Then they had the finals of the major. So there were semis there. Then they were in the finals of Cologne. They lost, obviously, in it, to the inspired NIP run. This was the one with the randomizers, etc. Then they came and they won a Star Series. They lost the DreamHack one where they turned up late and Kenny S and Kaylee went bonkers on them. Then you come back, they go to... The next LAN is they win the face at stage two, then they win ESWC, then they win Pregnant Mad. So they win three LANs in a row, but they don't win the major, even though they did technically beat the team that won the major. So that was always a bit sus. Then they won ESU, then they won the Clutch Com, which who cares? Meanwhile, LDLC had not only won the major, but then they won MLG. Then they came back. They didn't win Star Series because they didn't go to this one, it was an online one. They won the IOS Pantamera. Then you come along, they obviously then go and win the major, right? The problem I have is most people, I think, because the LDLC won the major here and then MLGX games, would say, well, that doesn't allow you to have the major. And obviously, yeah, uh, Envious, as the LDLC became, won a lot of tournaments around this time period, especially if Fnatic didn't attend. So I think some people just think of this as the Fnatic era, the main body of winning stuff in 2015. But if we're counting all the titles, it actually starts all the way back here. And you just see how many tournaments. But let's just look for 2015, since that's the year people think of, they even call it Fnatic 2015. So in 2015, we'll just start at the beginning of the year. So they go to MLGX games, Aspen, one, Clutch Con, two, Look, it wasn't a big tournament or a meaningful one. We're just going to count for the lands that they get to play at. It's Clutch Con 2. They go Pantamera. There's three. We're going to go up. We've got Cadavitz here. There's four. Then we have uh, ESEA finals. There's five. 
This is the PGL kickoff season won by TSM, famously. There's six. Face it, stage one finals, there's seven. DreamHack Open Tours, there's eight. Gfinity Spring Masters, there's nine. Fragmite Masters season four, there's ten. Remember, there was only 10 for phase in all of 2022. By the way, guys, I'm at 10 and we're up to June of 2015. So back then, a year, they can play in half a year what phase can compete in, in an entire year. Hence why, by the way, they can drop lands here and there. They can drop Fragback Master Season 4. They can drop the kickoff season. They can drop ESEA to VP, most famously, in the final there. They can lose these lands, guys. It's not the end of the world because there's so many that when they then win a bunch, they're not only going to have won more, more opportunities to play, but they're going to make their dominance look excellent by picking up the win. If FaZe loses once or twice, months go by without them being able to win. That's why I bring in that angle of, but were they the defining team of that era? By the way, we can go beyond that. If you keep going... Like, you can see how many more. Start at the top here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, that's technically exhibition, seven, eight. Guys, we're going to end up at something like almost 20 lands for the year. They get to play twice as many lands. And then they win what? Like, you know, it's like, oh, it's like 13 titles over 20 lands. These guys won five over 12. Like, look at the ratios here. That's something else to consider. It can't just be about absolute titles or spoiler. Another key point to make here is nobody can ever have an era in this time period because you'll just have to be the absolute nuts, like win every event. We're really talking about for like a year or more at this point in time. And you have so many fewer chances to make a mistake. And you'll just have to be God tier. I don't think, by the way, the joke is if you go back, I think the only teams that actually would have had the era that way would have probably have been NIP almost certainly because they never used to lose. Astralis when they're in absolute peak period in the middle of late 2018, early 2019. And then Fnatic debatably. And then after that, you can forget about it. Like no one else is even in the mix for it at this point in time. Like everyone would be a million miles away. So then you go, let's look at Astralis, right? Remember Astralis 2018. So again, you could, we'll do the whole year, but I'll just look for a second here. So if you go and look, they actually made the lineup here. They'd lost the Boston Major when they still had KB. They made the lineup here where they didn't do that well. Then they went to IEM and finished in the semis to phase. And then they finally won uh, Dreamback Marseille. Then they lost Sydney famously to the Chrome, uh, the exist standing version of phase clan. And then they went on the tear winning. But then because they blew Stockholm, some people said they weren't going to win the Major. Some people, some analysts even predicted Team Liquid to win that one. Then they bounced right back to start winning again. They don't win Copenhagen, but then they win Lords More to end the year. They get in the Grand Slam and all that. Everyone remembers that, right? Well, let's be real. This year, if they'd have had their lineup the whole year, so you know what, I'll count from when they got the lineup. So I won't count this major. We'll say from this one onwards. So we'll take, there's one land, there's one, there's two with Caravizia, there's three with Marseille, there's four with Sydney, there's five with the Pro League finals, there's six with ECS finals, there's seven with Cologne finals, there's eight with Premier E-League, e there's nine with DreamHack Stockholm, and there's 10 with the major. Right, so within... 10 tournaments, that was how many phase had the whole of 2022, were only in September. And I skipped the first event of the year and only counted from them onwards. We're already up to 10. Then go to Blast Istanbul, there's 11. Then go to Blast Copenhagen, there's 12. Then go to Chicago, there's going to be 13. You keep going up, ECS, there's 14. EPL, there's 15. End the year with a blast. There's 16. So this year, you get to play, if you've added in the foot, if they've had the lineup for the beginning, you get to play at 17 lands. Faze gets 10 in all of 2022. So do you see how it, it isn't the same as, well, how many events did they win? And how many in a row? And how long was the time period? And what? No, no, you have to look appropriate to the circuit you played in. You can only beat who's put in front of you. You can only win tournaments that are available for you to enter. You can only win competitions that exist. You can't play in a bygone era because you're in this era, aren't you? So for me... Like I say, you can go and look at it. It it was 10 events overall in 2022 for FaZe and like 12 over the period they were winning. It was 11 just in the first five to six months for Fnatic in 2015. And they, it was something like 11 for Astralis in just six to seven months of 2018. So when there are fewer events, you will need to be better for longer to get the era. I actually think this is why there's that whole problem with the discussion of Bonge was in Star Wars and Starcraft and Brood War. Everyone takes what used how the circuit used to work in Starcraft Brood War, and then they say that, like, for example, they used to say Faker couldn't be the Bonge of LOL because he, he hadn't won enough yet. Now he's won three or four worlds. So they'll go, now he's the Bonge. It's like, you idiot. Flash won most of his titles in a single calendar year. Faker, you're counting each title like a world's. So you would have to do three years. I mean, Flash actually won four titles in 2010, 
from what I remember, was it four? Yes, four titles. Right, well, here's the problem. That took fake 10 years to get four worlds, if you're counting the titles of worlds. But what you don't mention is, by the way, there was a chance to win something like six titles in that one year for Flash. Faker doesn't get six worlds every year and then get told each one he wins. Like, this is the problem. The scale is so far off. That's why people will even be shocked by the consideration here. But when they listen to some of my points, they'll probably see, I know what I'm talking about. Now, the key angle that I referenced earlier about being the defining team still, I mean, they are, guys. Like, they are. If we just go and look at the circuit. Let's go back to this page and look at the circuit a second. So, after they win Antwerp, they're easily the dominant team because they haven't lost a lot at this point in time. After that, like I say, it does matter. They're still in the mix around this point in time. Even after Cologne, right? After Cologne, remember, you have Pro League won by Vitelli. They don't win anything else this year. You have IM Rio won by Outsiders. They don't win anything else big. They have... Heroic wins four finals is the only land they win that year. And at the end of the year, G2 wins and then won anything the whole year long. So it's all face this year. It's still all just face. And then the next year, they don't win Kadavice. Okay, that's won by G2. So G2 is now starting to encroach on the narrative and an era, back-to-back -back events. But by the way, that's it for G2. It goes away after that. And it's all the way after a major until Cologne comes right at the end of um, CS go that G2 was back in the mix winning again and they, by the way they didn't do anything at the major either so you go and look elsewhere like by the time they win Pro League when they win Pro League in the Grand Slam it's again all about that brief interlude of G2's over and now it's all about FaZe Clan again and are they can they be number one are they number one are they the main team what, what, can they get to it that's kind of the discussion at this point in time even though yes they do not win the Blast Major they obviously only made it to um, top eight there didn't they and they didn't win IM Rio and blew that as well so by this point yeah you have blown it and there's no error at that point in time but like I say the question is who else is winning so you're going to immediately go what up Vitality because they're the big team now right Vitality with the lineup with Spinks and Magus and Dupree won ESL Pro League IM Rio the non-major and then Blast Paris Major so three lands then they changed lineup then they got Flames in and they won game as eight that's it there wasn't, that's it. There's nothing more than that. The rest are in CS2 with different lineups. G2's lineup with JKS won Blast World, Kanavice and Cologne. The problem is Blast World and Kanavice are close and then Cologne's miles away and they didn't do fuck all else elsewhere. They weren't relevant at the majors. Heroic won two Blasts, which as Kassad says, the majors will be Banana Cops. And Navi won a Banana Cop too when they still had SDY. And Mouse Sports won the last CS goal line, which was ESL Pro League Season 18. And so won IEM Dallas that wasn't an enormous event and isn't close to a prestige event. Cloud9 won an even less impressive field the year earlier at IEM Dallas where they beat an end with a standard of Spinks instead of, uh, uh, Snacks instead of Spinks and Outsiders won the major. So realistically, by the way, there's only actually, we're talking about three teams that have won multiple tournaments. It's Vitality, G2 and Heroic. Heroic's completely ignored on this list. G2 never does anything in the majors. Vitality won a major, but then aside from that, they won an IM Rio and an EPL. So no one's close to phase in this time period. They've won five. They won a major and a Grand Slam, two, two of three prestige events, three events in a row even. This is bonkers stuff, boys. And I'm not even counting CS2. We're not counting the rest of the time period. We don't need to. That's the stupidest part about all of this. So to me, I actually think if you look appropriate to the time scale and what there was to compete against and who they were competing against and how those other teams did, this was the team of 2022. This was the team of this era. This was the dominant team, the defining team. And if you look at how we evaluate it, they do deserve an era. So what we'll do is we'll look at something else. I'll bring up, if you remember... I had a bunch of docs that I did when I did the video for the Team Liquid one, when I was examining that aspect. And what I did was I made a bunch of, you'll see here, I made a bunch of different categories. So what we'll do is we'll do them separately. It's all good. It's not, nothing to worry about here, boys. So what we'll do is we'll start out at the, at the top, go in the first category. And then the first one, if you remember, was titles. Now, here's the thing. I've only inserted phase where they belong here. Like, for example, I haven't then fixed it. So, for example, they obviously shouldn't be the same numbers below because the ones below them would be bumped along in terms of how many there are. Like, if there's two sixes and it's after four, then actually that'd be eight instead of seven for LG and SK and 10 for Astral and Fit. But you get, only look at the first part. So the point I tried to show with this when I did the video about Team Liquid is you can really see the teams that have the era and either that SK probably shouldn't have an era and that the other ones don't quite 
quite match up. So if you see NIP have a bazillion titles, then you have Fnatic has a lot of titles too. Astralis has loads of titles. And those are the three teams of the era because actually, as you'll see later, SK doesn't really get the count. Team Liquid could only won the six titles in that time period. Fnatic 2016, when they went on that streak, had six in a row. Then you had SK with the five out of six turn. Like you have some good teams here, right? Fizz slots in just below some of the other teams contending for an era, right? The problem they have on winning titles is there's not as many, so it's going to look here like immediately they're not counted, right? But they've even got, by the way, more titles than the SK era of 2016. They won more championships with their five-man lineup than an era. Admittedly, one I think shouldn't be an era. But as you'll see, this is because there's just not as many events. Like, spoiler, if NIP won 17 lands, Fizz would have to play two entire full years <laughs> And they'd have way less lands in order to be able to even get to seven. That'd be almost every land for two years at this point in time. Then we'll go after titles. You obviously have majors. People say winning a major is essential to have an era. I don't think it has to, but I do think the problem is someone like Team Liquid didn't win more events after that major. That's what really bit them in the ass. So again, you look, teams with majors won. What do you know? Except for Nip, who gets to be the one outlier. Everyone else has multiple majors, right? So there's a problem for Fizz not have multiple majors. Astralis has two, but they had many, many majors to compete at. Fnatic has two. They were competing at three a year. LGSK has two. They were competing before, but obviously they didn't get this lineup. They had two a year, but they had a couple of years. I mean, admittedly, they were separate years. There was only two that they played with the FNX lineup, admittedly. So they won two there. And then obviously I'm counting Nip down here. Now, what's crucial is, just like Astralis in, I mean, that should that means the 2016 lineup, as in it was formed in 2016 with KB. They slot right in at number four there. They're in the top five immediately for majors. One of these teams that are, can be considered because they won a major. And since there was only two that year, that was very impressive. So, okay, we're starting to creep into relevance here. Just on these numbers alone, we're starting to get busy. Now you're going to start to see where it really gets going. Because here's where it gets spicy, right? Remember, I told you, FaZe is playing sometimes half as many tournaments as someone like Fnatic. So you play half as many tournaments... And you won six titles, which gets you into, I put five here, so obviously it wouldn't count because it'd actually be six, right? You're top six already just by winning six titles. Uh, why does Fnatic, I guess I should have said, you're seven, you're top seven because actually uh, this is off with the Fnatic one. They slot right in there. They won six. One less than TL in terms of finals. This is finals you've appeared in. Faze appeared in one extra final, obviously Blast, um, four finals where they lost to Heroic. You've made it to six. That's if I count the year, by the way. If I count the next year where you all saw... Oh, no, this is six. That's right, it's six. It is, the number is six. I'm not counting, obviously, later on. This is six. You're right up there with the other teams that were in contention. But remember, yours, your circuit is like half as big. So actually, six is incredible. Six actually scaled, puts you in this top three. It's more comparable in terms of what's available. Then we'll just look at these last two. So it's about series and length of dominance. So what you had here was best of three, best of five series won in a war, right? Nips is unbeatable. Team Liquid came close, but they couldn't win that major. Astralis, a lot of people don't know, only had nine. Fnatic had eight. SK 2017 had eight. Fnatic, right? Phase 2022 had seven guys, and they're playing way less lands. And look how many, they've won that many in a row, series. They're right up there, one series won behind the Fnatic team that had an era. They're two behind Astralis when they've done it. I mean, I'm counting at this point in time, obviously. This was made in 2019 when, uh, the, I think it was September of 2019 when uh, Team Liquid had failed. So there actually might be more tournaments afterwards that obviously a different Astralis won when they did the comeback run, right? I'd have to check it because obviously they won in Beijing with undefeated. Then you go down here, length of dominance in months, right? So Nips is like a year, a year, Astralis is a year, right? If we're going to say, I popped it in here, phase, I put like six months. Of, I actually didn't put any, oh, I think I didn't put something in there. I think this was a different phase that I put in. Where would you even put them for this length of dominance? Because if we're counting up to Cologne, then that's like five, six months already, right? You're right below the seams with an era. Then if we consider there's less events and you're dominator of that time period, look, it's there's not as many opportunities. There's less opportunities to fail, but you also must succeed at those opportunities. So you could say there's a luck element of all, but you're going to need luck in this particular kind of a scenario. So to me, if you look appropriate, proportionally and scaled to how many tournaments there are, what the circuit's like and who they're facing, Face Clan did have an era in 2022, or it can either be the first portion of 2022 or going into early 2023. I've had to make a lot of tough choices in my career, but thanks to the support of my Patreon community, the Skrilluminati, I never have to make tough financial decisions. So this video and all the rest on my channel are kindly supported by Ahmed Haju, Frisky, Mac Pugnaccio Racula, Animosity, Jensen Gore, Tobias Berners-Gorney, Tosh, 
token, and you know it if you've ever heard before, and you'll hear it many times in the future. A special thanks goes out to my main man, Jerry Keys Minion. Do you want to ask a question in my video AMA? Do you want to be part of one of those long discussions where we talk about whatever you like in esports? Do you want teasers? Find out who the upcoming guests are going to be. Or maybe you want to suggest a topic for a future Thorin's Thoughts type video. Well, if any of these perks or others appeal to you, put your money where your mouth is today and join the Skrilluminati by joining the Patreon link in the description box below.